good morning to you and you and you. It is time to skip the BS, time for Undisputed, time to talk about the hottest team in the NFL, the Dallas Cowboys, <laughs> with my two favorite Cowboy bashers, Keyshawn and Sherm. Good morning to you both. What's happening, Skip, man? Now, how the hell are the Cowboys I, the I hottest know. team okay. in the National Football okay, League? I'm glad you pushed back on that because I'm obviously exaggerating with the hottest team. The Cowboys, of course, barely beat the Chargers after getting, quote, unquote, buried by the 49ers, 42 to 10 a score that will live in infamy in Cowboys team history, but that's the point. There it is. <laughs> Richard Sherman, let's start with you. Do you like or have a problem with what Micah had to say? Uh, I got a problem with it, Skip. Uh, I got a problem with it. It, it. He doesn't want to get bashed by the media. I got a simple, very simple solution for you, brother. Don't get beat by 32 on prime time. You won't get bashed by anybody. You win that game, nobody. If you lose that game by seven, nobody really bash you. They say, hey, y'all got beat. It is what it is. You played well. This happened. If you get a sack in that game, they say, hey, he played, Michael Parsons played well. He did his thing, Fair made point. a huge impact on the game. If Dak Prescott throws three, four touchdowns in that game, they're not criticizing Dak Prescott. They're saying, hey, Dak Prescott played a really good game, mm. strong game. Something else is the reason they lost that game. That's not what happened. Your defense gave up 42. Dak Prescott threw three interceptions. The criticism was necessary and warranted. It, you, it's very difficult to compliment a team that gets beat 42 to 10 on primetime, regardless of who the team is. I apologize, Micah Parsons. We did not have positive things to say about your 42 to 10 loss. And then your other loss was also by double digits to a team that's only won one game this season. Yep. So it's hard to find positive things to say, and you say the energy needs to be the same. Yes, uh, Jalen Hurts played terribly. And he played terribly. We're going to criticize that. They don't get talked about enough when they're playing well or they're playing bad. We don't, we don't talk about them either way. We talk about the Dallas Cowboys, regardless of if the Eagles are 18-0. and 0, We'd be talking about the Dallas Cowboys because that is what, what America wants to see, apparently. That's what people want to hear. If you're playing well, you're, you're up for defensive player of the year because you're playing for the Dallas Cowboys. If yep. you're playing for the Cleveland Browns or the Cincinnati Bengals, I don't know if you'd be in the discussion. Maybe Miles Garrett should have been in a defensive player of the year vote a few years, but he's playing in Cleveland, so he's Another not getting the one. same acclaim. He's not yep. getting the same, the same following. So the same thing that makes you laugh and, and puts money in your pocket makes you cry. Mm. You know, I, I, I don't think, to be honest with you, I don't think Micah should even be worried about what people say. Uh, especially people that are considered media types, right? They, he just shouldn't. That's the way I would approach it. I could care less. And, and, and I'm trying to give him a little bit of understanding and insight on why. First of all, you are on your way to becoming the highest paid at your position, possibly the highest paid at the defensive position in the history of the National Football League. Money aside, of course. check that box. You are on America's team, so to speak, right? It's America's team. There are eyeballs mm -hmm. that are watching you in the star every single Sunday, every single Thursday night you're on, every single Monday night you're on. You continue to set records mm -hmm. from television audiences, win or lose. You're America's team. As Skip Bayless continues to try and tell me. Mm. <clears throat> right. on, on, on top of that, your fan base is annoying as hell, and I play for him. <laughs> I play for him. But when you have Skip Bayless, Michael Irvin, on a constant, continual basis, trying to convince the world that watch the Dallas Cowboys just how good they are. How good they are, week in and week out. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. My Cowboys, this cow... It's annoying as hell. It's going to tick people off and get on people's nerves. Furthermore, when you are getting, as Richard said, beat by a team that's won one game, and then you go off and you beat a bad team in the New England Patriots that many of us might have thought was okay, and then all of a sudden the wheels fell off on them. Yeah. Then you go to San Francisco and you get your shot run on you to a whole nother level. Yeah. People are going to have things to say. 
Philadelphia gets the benefit of the doubt, okay? The San Francisco 49ers get the benefit of the doubt because their fan base is not obnoxious to people on a constant basis. <laughs> that's, and that's the reality of it. And so you can't get mad at that. The great Dallas Cowboy fan that Skip Bayless is, he, yes, he attacks Dak Prescott. Mm -hmm. He attacks him when he doesn't play well and he does not praise him at the level when he plays well. He gives him a little bit of a little carrot, here you go, a little olive branch to him. But he goes at him because that's just what he sees as a fan. So when you start to think about it, people that talk about this stuff for a living like us, we ain't, you know, we all we're doing is, is reporting what we see. You're not a very good football team in certain situations, although you're four and two. So don't worry about what we up here, we, what we're up here talking about. Just play football. Go win. Go get them sacks. Go get the things that have gotten you to be what you are and people talking about you the way that we are about number 11. That, 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 it's simple. It's simple as that. It's not that hard. Okay, my turn. I do have a problem with where Micah is coming from on this topic because I want to shake him by the shoulder pads and say, wake up. Don't, don't you realize you get to play for the Dallas Cowboys. You are blessed to play for America's team. This is the most valuable franchise in the world, including all those soccer franchises all over Europe. This is the franchise whose team will be the top rated TV rated team in four or five of the biggest games of the year every year right on schedule. You can book it. I love Micah Parsons, but he's still got a lot of kid in him. He still comes off as a little naive, if not a lot naive, because Micah, you got to wake up. You play for the most polarizing team in the history of sports. You can have the Yankees. You can argue the Yankees, but it ain't close to me. Maybe it's because I live in cowboy world and cowboy nation, but I have written books about this whole phenomenon. Nothing in the history of sports is like the love and the hatred inspired on a weekly basis by the Dallas Cowboys. There's some dynamic around them where you have to ride the, the, the most mind-blowing roller coaster in the history of roller coasters because it's going to roll on and on and on week after week. They are going to, when you least expect it, go to Arizona and lose to the sorriest team on their schedule in a home away from home game in Phoenix. And then they're going to bounce right back when these two cowboy dislikers, I won't say haters, dislikers, <laughs> say, oh, Belichick's going to run the ball down their damn throats. And they'll rise up and win 38-3. to And then you say, oh, Super Bowl, here we come. And they're going to go out to San Francisco, and my quarterback is going to stink even worse than he did in the two playoff losses to the San Francisco 49ers. <laughs> and they're going to get beaten what felt like 49 to 10 by the 49ers, but it was 42, 42 to 10 in your measuring stick game, your biggest game of the year on the biggest stuff. Stop it. It's who they are. Dak, I mean, Micah, you, you got to wake up and grow up and wise up to who, what you're part of. You are, to me, the most talented player on the most hated slash loved team in the history of sports. So, you, you should embrace that. You should be proud of it. You should feel blessed by the fact you get to play for this team because it's going to make you a whole lot more money than even you deserve on and off the field. And nobody cares about the Eagles as much as they care about the Cowboys. I covered the 49ers for three years. It, it is a great franchise. It, it, Richard played for it. It, it is it is high class, top drawer franchise. So I, I love to try that. Once y'all try doing, okay, once you try doing what the Eagles that. and the 49ers okay, are doing, we're, we're not instead that. of but, instead but of losing cares. and then winning against okay. Belichick and then going right, crazy. But, but nobody cares. Y'all try that. Nobody cares about the 49ers the way they do the Dallas freaking Cowboys. I, I understand it's that. Just what they but, are. But when I say, yeah. why don't you all do it different? I'm talking about people like you, Skip. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Because you boasted, along with Michael, after you beat Belichick, no, oh, the great Belichick, you know, he's never lost to you. did the whole yeah. dog and pony show. Well, it was the worst loss of his career. Okay, but, but you put such an emphasis on that, but you forgot about the 49ers while you were thinking about in, 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 in loving the fact that you beat the New England Patriots but forgot about the 49ers that was in your way to become something the following week. Mm. You totally forgot about it. You already started booking your tickets to Las Vegas. No, I didn't. Oh, Michael, you did. Michael did. Oh, you just talking about Michael. Paradise. So you're one of those guys now. Yeah. You're doing this now. <laughs> no. oh, yeah, you no. are. I mean, was, at the end of the day, at the end of the day, like Keyshawn said, they, these two teams, Philadelphia Eagles and the 49ers, get the benefit of the doubt because they just went to the NFC Championship and met in the game, and one of them went to the Super Bowl. Absolutely. And people expect the same result this year. They expect these two teams to meet in the NFC Championship and go to the Super Bowl. If y'all had beat the San Francisco 49ers last year in the playoffs, then this regular season meeting, regardless of the outcome, probably wouldn't have had that much of an effect on what, we, what we're talking about. We'd have said, hey, if, if they beat you, hey, they didn't beat you when it mattered last year, so <laughs> they're probably not going to beat you when it mattered this year. It, if if y'all would have lost, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if, if they would have beat you, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But at the end of the day, the, the reason certain teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, they can lose a game they're not supposed to lose. But three of the last four years, they've been in the, 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 the Super Bowl. Patrick Mahomes, two-time MVP. The AFC Championship is now the Kansas City Invitational because it's there every single year. So they get the benefit of the doubt. The reason you do not get the benefit of the doubt, because you went Casper the Friendly Ghost from January, I mean, from December through January 15th, when your season ended, you you had, what, two sacks during that whole time? Oh, Micah, you didn't yeah. have a tremendous impact. Micah, yeah. I mean, I'm talking about Micah. Yeah. And so we're, we, we want to give you credit. Uh, uh, believe you me, we have no problem giving you all the credit in the world. If you if you were leading the league in sacks right now, you'd be the, 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 the leader for a defense player of the year. Nobody would question it. Everybody would be singing your praises. But you cannot, you cannot fold. Because the same thing that makes you laugh is going to make you cry. So treat the two imposters the same. Week. You don't yep. need to be watching them. You don't need to be watching the media. You don't need to be, be watching us. Because we'll praise you and bring you up to the highest highs. And then we'll throw you down to the ground. Because that is what it is. You know, Skip, as long as I can remember and really understand football, I'm not talking about watching it on TV, but understanding it, the game of football, the Cowboys have always gotten a hype. Good and bad. Mm -hmm. oh, think about it. It, 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 it. When when things weren't going so great off the field for the Cowboys, it was everywhere. There was other cities with other players doing, in, the, same doing the same thing. Absolutely. But nobody was paying attention no. to them. They was paying attention to the Dallas Cowboys. But guess what the Dallas Cowboys was doing at that time? They were winning Super Bowl rings. Mm -hmm. You know the famous... How about them Cowboys? You know, that was that was it. That was America's team. They have played in eight. They, they, yes, they have, but I mean, since I've been yeah. able... See, I could. I don't even remember the Starback years because I was a puppy. I don't remember that. But I mean, as long as I've been able to understand the game, the Cowboys have been on both sides, good mm. and bad. Mm. But what happens is, they. what happened was they won. They haven't won. Okay, they haven't won because if... If you were winning on a consistent basis, like, let's call it the Kansas City Chiefs, the mm -hmm. Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers could argue that they are franchise, and, and you would, you, you're a historian of this NFL stuff, mm -hmm. that that franchise of the Pittsburgh Steelers is just as big in the NFL game as the Dallas Cowboys. But they win consistently. They go to Super Bowls. They've been in the playoffs. The Cowboys ain't one and done, as Richard said. Okay. So can't get mad. Okay, but you have to understand, for decade upon decade, this team, because it loses and wins so spectacularly, it detonates the biggest overreaction in sports history, good or bad. You two have been victimized by it just this when year. When they won, that was spectacular. Win spectacular? When? When you said they, they win spectacular. Right. When, last okay. time they won spectacular was with Michael Irvin and Emmett. Yeah, but they Detroit. just keep doing it. Every, how, what, <laughs> what, what was opening night this year? What happened? Skip. What happened on opening Sunday night football? Help me a out. Skip. Help me a out. That is not win has spectacular. To be a spectacular. 40 team. to nothing at the Giants who were against in the playoffs just last year. Okay, you against can say it now. Wait, 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 wait. 
You can say it now because you got 2020 revisionist history hindsight. But when we went into that game <laughs> on opening night, boy, the Giants are they're, they're a threat in that division. Who said because that? they won a playoff game last year and they paid Daniel Jones in the offseason. Yeah. And you thought, uh-oh, that coach has got it going on in New York. Oh, here we go. Pay people in yeah. business yeah. all the time that don't deserve 40, it. 40 to nothing. It's hard yeah. to beat a team on the road yeah. 40 to nothing. It's, it's, it's just hard. It is. It is. Yeah. But, but at the same time, we got to keep things in perspective because you guys haven't had a spectacular win. That's why the San Francisco game was so important. That was your measuring stick. That was your chance to have a spectacular win. Okay. And you guys laid an egg. Okay. And so if that game was reversed, if that game was reversed and the Dallas Cowboys beat the San Francisco 49ers sure. 42 to 10, Skip, we would be talking about, hey, no matter what happened, I mean, unless they lost five in a row, we'd be talking hey, about the Dallas Cowboys right. are the favorite to win it all. I'm just telling you both, this is the history of this franchise. This is why it's so captivating. You can't take your eyes off it, whether you love it or hate it. The first, I told you guys last week, the first time they went to the Super Bowl, that season they lost 54 to 19 at Minnesota. And then they turned around on Monday night football and they lost 38 to nothing at home to the Cardinals, 38 to nothing. And they go on a Super Bowl roll and get to the Super Bowl. It, it's what they do. It's 40 to nothing over the Giants. Then it's 30 to 10 over the Jets. And then it's Arizona. And then it's 38 to three over Belichick. Both of you guys ate crow over that game because you overreacted. Skip, skip. You jumped to the conclusion Arizona just exposed Skip. the Dallas Cowboys. I no, I don't know. You just right told me about, about a, you, just, Skip, you just told me about a 1970 I, Dallas Cowboys. The history 10. of the team. It's, oh, wait, 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 wait. They built their you, fandom you, off that. Hold on, the, the, coach. The, these, these are lifelong fans. You, you just yeah. told me about a 1970 team that went yeah. on a historic. I'm run just telling you, it's their history. Lost, that lost. To a couple teams, and they went on a historic run. Okay, all right. How, Do you let me go back that? to their last Super Bowl team. During that year, that Cowboy team featuring Michael Irvin and yeah, Troy Aikman yeah, and Emmitt yeah, Smith yeah. and Deion Sanders, yeah. they lost twice to yes. a team in Washington that was going to go 4-12. and 12. They lost both times. And North on, Turner knew them. And, but that's baloney. I know what do Michael you mean? That. I, I, that's I, baloney. Stop it. It's not baloney. Did, did Kellen Moore yeah. know him on Sun, uh, but, uh, Monday I, night? So they all know North Turner and Kellen Moore in the same company? Well, I don't know. I don't want to hear about I know North way better than either you two do. I've lived with him. I know him. I don't know. I don't want to hear about they had half no a talent. century ago, Skip. I don't want to hear about three oh, decades ahead. ago. But wait, Coach. How about 1996? You want to hear about that? You, That's three decades ago. Oh, so I, I was mean, going, I was going to say I, to you, Skip, you mentioned 1970. I have a lot of respect for the history of the game, no question about it. But also have recent history. Teddy Bridgewater went into Dallas uh, four years ago, I think it was, when he was with the Denver Bridge. Broncos. Okay, mm. and unleashed on them. Mm -hmm. They ain't going no historic yeah, well, run after you're that. You're making my point. They ain't going, but they didn't go point. on that, a historic that, run saw, after that. Who saw that coming? Yeah, but that's what you said, though. Okay. You said when they you, lose you this did. way, they go on historic runs. Well, they ain't going on no historic run. Well, we're, I'm just, I'm just. We're, we're still young look. in this season. It could happen. Skip, skip. <laughs> they're right now, right now, skip. They're on a historic run. Mm. They're on a historic run for a team that you think should be in championships for not making it to championships. Skip, they're, in a, they're on a historic run. They're, what, 30 years into it? 29 okay. years into it? All right, let's, let's go back. Let's try 2018, for instance. On a Monday night in the middle of the season, Tennessee came into Jerry World and took them all apart. It was humiliating. Yeah. It was embarrassing. It was disgusting. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, when I least expect it, they go to Philadelphia the next week. And they beat the Eagles, and they go on a roll that, that started feeling like it was a Super Bowl roll. Oh, and guess who they beat? They beat the, like they beat the Seattle Seahawks featuring Russell Wilson at Jerry World in a playoff game. Dak outplayed Russell Wilson. And I thought, uh-oh, here we come. And they ran into the Rams, who were on their way to the Super Bowl, and it was a close game. But we lost out here where Keyshawn used to his old stomping grounds at the Coliseum. Skip. My point is, look, look at the rise and the fall and the rise and the fall and the roller coaster ride. But that's it your problem, though. That, and, that, and that is why I'm trying to get you to yeah. understand that's your problem. Mm -hmm. Just because they go up, y'all start going crazy. And, and Micah is complaining about this because you get overhyped. Mm -hmm. People like you 
start to go crazy okay. and, and wearing your jersey, watching the game, and putting the deep emotions in it when you know good and damn well they're not going anywhere. But you keep I, I doing it. Are you, so, you, so what you do you say, yes, you. is you alienate and you tick people off by doing it instead of letting it, as I've been telling you since I joined the show, you and Michael. Mm. Relax. Mm. Let it, let it, you know, let it grow a little bit. Let it materialize a little bit. You two overreact when they lose. No, it, you're, no, you're just no, as bad as I am. No, I'm yes, not yes, overreacting yes, yes. when they yes. lose. Yes. That, that if, we, if you didn't go to Super Bowl, I wouldn't, I wouldn't need to react the way I do I, because we, I have to keep your expectations in line with what the team actually is. No, and keep it them sounds in like a hater, but it, 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 only, it, it really is only realistic expectations. This team is probably a divisional team at best right now. That's their ceiling. I'm, I'm, I'm saying it at the beginning. I will continue to say it, and everything I've said and what they put on tape tells me that. So it's like you make me out to be a hater because I'm saying, hey, when they don't play well, they didn't play well. When they play well, they played well. Hey, I, I give them credit when it's due. But, at but least, if you keep saying... Hey, Keyshawn gave me credit. When Dak stinks, I say he stunk. He stunk against the 49ers in both the playoff games. you say all the time, even when he played good. That's he not played right. good. When he, he played, played good this past. He played good no. against the Chargers, hey, I, and you, you were like, you ah, know, well... well. Uh, what do you when, mean? When, when he, when he plays good, years, when he played, I was his biggest fan. Uh, biggest fan. When he played well against the yeah. Patriots, when he played well against the Jets, you are still saying, I All still right. don't yes. think he can get us to All the right. Super Bowl. Just, yes. just real quick, to sum this up, Keyshawn texted me a picture it's a couple of weeks back. <laughs> remember the that. Eagles were playing at SoFi against the Rams. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. If we could flash it up real quick, it's some Eagles fan. He's got it on a 93 jersey, and on the back of it, it says Dallas sucks. Oh, yeah, I can't okay. see right. that. <laughs> okay, and it's funny, but here was my point back to Keyshawn. No Dallas fan, no self-respecting Dallas fan would ever wear a jersey on the back of which it says Philly sucks because – we're above them. We don't care about Philadelphia. Okay, so we don't even care about San Francisco. So guess what? So guess yeah. what? Yeah. Guess what? Won't you tell that to Michael Parsons then? Won't That's, you let I, him I, know I that? I just told him that. You I should, just tried. You should specifically I tell him we, we, we that. We are above all that. Because we clearly, are better than that. Because clearly others are worried about other teams. <laughs> I got it. I'm trying to Skip. educate him. Skip. So are you. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, well, I need to educate you, Skip. The definition of insanity is doing the yeah. same thing over and over and expecting different results. Skip, you've seen the, the, the story start off the same and end the same every year, whether it's Aaron Rodgers sending you okay. home, okay. whether it's the Rams sending you no, home, no, no. whether it's the 49ers sending okay. you home. Okay, wow. Richard, you don't understand. I grew up with this team. I've watched it go to eight Super Bowls and win five. I'm, I'm good. I, I am like, no, you're I, not. I, yes, I am. No, you're not. Yes. Now you just sit up here. If we ain't erased just... the last 30 years, <laughs> you, you're but, good. But wait, Richard, he getting ready to sit up here blatantly, and I don't want to call him a liar, but in this case, you get ready to lie to us. You look, no. you look at us right in our face. I, I, I went to eight, I won five, I'm good. I, I, if I have, that's the case, I'm acting like you act. I have known the mountaintop in okay. ways that very few fans o have. Okay, okay. so won't, won't you act like it then? Okay. What are you talking about? I do act like it. It's why I can't. <laughs> But why I say Dak stinks, because we don't do mediocre. Jeez. I'm sorry. All right, let's change subjects and gears. We'll get back to Micah here in just a few minutes. But wait, Julio Jones just signed with those Eagles? Oh, mm, here we go. Y'all have lost another player y'all could have used. <laughs> Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.